we're developing the same themes. And so what, what we've seen happen is predicting and judging the, uh, the efficacy of the campaign by those metrics of opens and clicks. Um, that's not a metric that you can count on, right? So the best practice is to hold more sales accountability back to that email program and judging it by a mix of who is the audience that I only reached through this email program versus I reached through my other um, ad campaigns as well. And I know that's, I, I know that can be tough, right? If you're, if you're built on looking at ClickFunnel and Google Analytics telling you where the traffic is coming from, it is a hard cultural change to then take a step back and saying, hey, that's one view of my business. If I look at the consumers who are buying from me, what does that tell them, right? And if you're planning a, your media spend around your audience, you'll have the answers. If you're not planning your media spend around your audience and you're relying on things like Google Analytics to tell you where the traffic came from, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to hit some obstacles unexpectedly uh, simply because those tracking method mechanisms are cookie-based, tag-based, and you, know, you saw Apple uh, making changes. You already known Safari and Firefox are blocking some of those things. So it, the, the practice is you have to evolve to some of the first-party data so that you can do audience planning and sales match back so that you can kind of shift through that changing noise to understand what's real. Yeah, and I would say too, you know, you know, look at your attribution. Be careful you're not just doing last touch and ignoring some of your attribution signals, you know, especially as you're feeding all that data into your media mix model. So, you know, again, I think, you know, email still remains. I mean, everybody thought, oh, email's dead and, you know, the millennials don't use email and the Gen Zers, you know, don't either. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think it's still um, a really good and solid, important function of the sales funnel. You know, be careful not to just measure it as last click because I do think it works in conjunction with your other channels and because you own your own email channel, it's much more cost effective, but also be careful of over emailing. I would say that's a best practice. And, and those, you know, I, I always, I don't know, as a former email marketer, I just shake my head a little bit about some of the brands who are so aggressively over emailing and, and really, I think probably plunging into unsubscribe land because it's just so overdone, you know, really be careful about, about your choice of, of timing and frequency and things like that. And, and I'd say on that one, watch the over emailing as well. Uh, if you're looking at best practices. That, that's a really good point, Lucy, as we talked about, you know, if you've already had a relationship with a consumer to that, you have their email address and you over me email and they opt out. Well, they could also change their email address and use a different one. And now you've lost that communication channel. So when we talk about investing in first party data, you know, being sensitive to those opt-out rates and not over emailing is, is one of the best things you can probably do.